Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we're going to be making a cute, um, small wood round baby announcement. These are super trendy right now and I don't blame them, they're super cute. They can be hung on a hospital um, door, on your front door when you just had your baby. People use them to take their newborn photos or um, photos with their baby in those first couple months. So I'm gonna show you how I made mine. Let's go ahead and get started. This project is a little more exciting than most because this is for my new coming niece. She's supposed to be here in February if she hangs on that long. So I wanted to make this for my brother and my sister-in-law because I'm so excited for them and I cannot wait. To start with this, I have a small, it's a 12 inch wood round. Now I have a bunch of these that I had been lucky enough to come across um, in bulk. I split them with a friend of mine, so I have a ton. I don't necessarily know the exact um, brand or anything that they are because we did get them from an auction, but you can find a lot of things similar on Amazon. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to paint it up. Now I know that the colors of their nursery are sage and gold, so I wanted to play on that and then um, her name is Rosalie, which is adorable, and so a little rosy, little rose. We're going to kind of play up that theme a little bit. To start, I just wanted to pick my colors. I'm using chalk paint just because that's what I have already in the colors that they need, but I am going to use a little bit of acrylic paint as well because I need a pop of pink and I don't have any pinks in my chalk paint. So the colors that I have, I'll show you here. Um, the two are Folk Art brand. One is Sage, the other is Seaside Villa. Um, I'm also going to be using um, this like lighter and darker pink that are just in the acrylic paints. And then I'm also going to be just using some white chalk paint to keep it from getting too dark. Um, the paint kind of scheme or pattern that I wanted to go on here is just kind of like a muted, um, like more of a blurry background with just those pops of color coming through. And the way that I'm going to accomplish this is that after I mix up my paint, so I'm gonna water down my chalk paints just a little bit to make them smoother so that they're not gloopy and or dry and they spread out a little bit easier on this wooden piece. <coughs> I apologize, I am recovering from being sick. But um, after I've mixed those up, I'm just going to dip my brush in there and get a little bit of the paint color that I want onto it and paint that on. And I'm just gonna be doing that in sections. So I want the sage to be the like main color of the background. And then when I want a pop of pink, I'm just gonna put a little bit of pink on my brush. If I get too much, I'm just gonna dab some of it off. Um, and I'm just going to kind of brush that back and forth on there to where it kind of blends together, but it doesn't completely muddy. Um, so this is just gonna kind of take some patience and it's super easy to do. You just, <clears throat> you have to be patient. You can always add more. Um, so I do this while all the paints are still wet because I feel like it blends together more. But if you're not comfortable with this technique and you're really not sure, you could just paint your background the full color that you want and then um, go back and kind of dry brush those other colors on. Um, but yeah, so if you just watch me here, I'm just dipping in the colors that I want and kind of just blending them out together. If it's too much of one color, I just add a little bit of another um, and I just kind of use those different colors throughout and get the background that I want. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to be doing um, some Mod Podging. I'm going to take this Rose scrapbook paper. You saw me use this on a project a couple video several videos ago, but I absolutely love this paper. I think it's beautiful and perfect color scheme for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to cut out the roses that I want or the <clears throat> bushels that I want. Oh, excuse me. And then I'm going to be Mod Podging those onto my wood piece once my paint is completely dry. To do this, you just want to Add some Mod Podge to the back of your picture, paper, tissue paper, napkin, whatever you're using. Um, and I also like to put a little bit down on the spot that I'm going to be adhering it to. And then place it down very carefully and smooth out any air bubbles that you may need. Now I am using my hands in this because this is a thick scrapbook paper and it's not going to um, be soaked through with the Mod Podge. If you have like a tissue paper or something, do not use your fingers. Use use something else because <clears throat> you're going to make a mess. 
So after I get that down and all the bubbles out and get it as flat on there as I want in the position that I like, I'm going to Mod Podge over that entire piece of scrapbook paper, including the entire rest of the round. So I like to do this to the entire piece whenever I'm Mod Podging on because it's going to give it the same sheen, um, whether you're using a matte or a glossy or whatever. With Mod Podge, you do see, tend to get brush strokes and you can see in certain light where you've began and where you end. So I just like to go over the entire thing to make it all one smooth surface um, and make it all look even. Now once this is dried, I'm going to be taking some sandpaper and cleaning off the edges and I will show you that when we get to that step. Now I'm going to be making a stencil to put the name and the date, time, weight, and length on here. I created this design in um, Design Space um, on my own. I think the top font was Cream Candy and then the bottom, I honestly don't remember, but if you're curious, leave me a comment and I'm happy to look that up for you. Um, so I just designed this in there, um, used a circle template to make sure my sizing and everything was correct. Um, and then I also added this extra little arrow at the top centered. That way it can help me center this piece. I have a feeling I had a feeling that I would have a hard time, you know, with the transfer tape and stuff, finding center. So I'm really happy I did this because it helped out a lot with that. Now, I am using contact paper. The brand of this, it just says con-tact brand. Um, I can put this down in the description for you guys if you're curious about it. I use this because it's much cheaper to do it this way than to get some type of stencil vinyl or anything like that and it doesn't stick a whole lot and I really really like that because I have in the past tried to do like the stencil vinyl or other options and it just didn't work for me it would rip my paint off even if I sealed it in um, I always seal in even the paint so if I just do like an acrylic paint whatever and let it dry or whatever I'll put like a polycrylic or a Mod Podge or something over it and let that dry too to try to keep it from peeling up and I always had issues with that and it could honestly be operator error, but this is what has worked for me. So I had bought a bunch of this contact paper for a project that I wanted to do on a filing cabinet and then it didn't turn out kind of like how I wanted it to. So I have a bunch of this contact paper left over and I wanted to put it to use. So I use this with the washi tape setting and it cuts perfectly every single time. So this is just a really cheap option for me. Now I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna need some patience. So it weeds beautiful. I don't have any trouble with that at all, but I will say that it sometimes has not issues sticking, but it just, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to get it completely flat, even with your transfer paper, excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm also using a new transfer paper in this as well. Um, I have seen a lot of people talk about this like masking tape transfer paper. Um, I have it right here. I don't know what brand this is. I ordered this off of Amazon and I wanted to use this because the contact paper is very thin. It has worked with my transfer paper, like normal transfer paper. I typically use my really old stuff to where it's really um, got like a layer of like just, I don't know, fuzz and stuff all over it. That way it's not too strong because the contact paper is really thin and it's easy, it stretches even easier than vinyl. So you have to be really careful. So I thought with this, because I've been using that a lot for stencils um, and I've heard that this is really good for like painted backgrounds and stuff, it won't pull it off. I wanted to give it a try. So it gave me a little bit of difficulty on the fact that the contact paper is really thin this masking tape transfer is very thin. So when I went to put it down, um, it was really lightweight and easy to move around and everything, but it didn't hold as stiff as a norm my normal transfer paper would. So I had a little bit of bubbling issues and whatever, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so basically you just put it down like regular transfer paper. Um, you pull it up, you do everything that you could. Whenever I do my vinyl, it doesn't matter if I'm doing a stencil or wording or whatever, I always um, smooth everything over on the top after I remove it from my, um, my Cricut mat. Then I 
take it, I flip it over and I do it to the back too to make sure that everything's adhered really well and there's no bubbles. I just find that this gives me a better um, stick. It helps the whatever image or whatever I'm doing stick to the transfer paper better so that when I pull the backing off, I'm not having a bunch of issues. Now with this, I just did it really slowly. Um, like I said, the contact paper isn't as sticky, so things can move around a little bit easier, but it's not a problem if you're patient. So I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're not a patient person, um, I'm typically not, but if it saves me some money, I'm gonna be as patient as I need to be because your girl loves to sell, your girl loves to not waste it. So um, just take your time, Mary, and just watch and make sure that you're getting all the parts off the back will come off beautifully. So then when I went to put it down onto my wood round, I have that little notch, that little arrow there at the top to help me center it. I just kind of got it the best I could. You know, it's not clear and it's a stencil taking up most of it. So it was kind of hard to find center. So I just took my time to do that. And then I was ready to peel off the transfer tape. Now I think this stuff works awesome. Um, I really like it. This is the first project that I've used it on. So I'll get back with you after I've done a few. Um, and I did keep the um, that piece of transfer tape, I happen to have extra backing from the vinyl left over and I just put that on the back and so I'm going to just see if I can use that piece again or not. Um, anyway, so very slowly removing it. As you can see, I'm kind of having some issues with um, little pieces kind of wanting to not stay down, but I feel like that happens no matter what. So I'm just being very calm and whatever and smoothing those back out. And then as you can see, because the contact paper is not very sticky, um, it's kind of wanting to pull away. And because of that, I had more air bubbles than I would typically like. Um, I've used this for several different other projects for stenciling, and I didn't have near the issue as I did on this project. And I'm thinking that's because it's wood. Um, my other projects that I've used it on were like star foam and that kind of thing. So this just took a little bit more patience, but it still turned out great. So I'm very slowly, I, I remove it. After it's done, you can see all those little bubbles and things that I have in there. So I'm just going to um, push it back down. So say I pulled my transfer paper off to the right. I'm going to push that, start from the right side and push the air back to the left because that would mean when I'm pulling, I'm pulling it further to the right than it needs to be. If I hope that can make sense to you. So I'm just going to slowly work it through. And for the most part, it all lays back down to where it's supposed to. Um, and in the spots that it doesn't, I'm just going to take my little X-Acto knife, slice it, and kind of fold it over itself to where it still looks good. Um, but there's no bubbles to where the paint can get underneath. So after you've done what you need to do to get your stencil down, if you're using this, like I said, to me... Yes, it's a little extra work, but it saves me a ton of money and I feel like any crafter can respect that. So um, get it down, just use your patience, and then it's time to stencil this on. Now, typically if I were going to be doing some type of paint on top of my stencil, the best thing that you can do for a hack, um, if it's a solid background, you can use the color of your background and go ahead and stencil on. Or... For any background, like for instance this one, I have all these different colors going on, you can use Mod Podge and you would just literally Mod Podge, like stencil and Mod Podge on your entire face of your um, stencil and what that's going to do is keep your paint from bleeding under. So I'm going to, in this one, actually be using a paint pen and I don't think that's going to be necessary. So I'm going to skip this step, but I'm telling you this is a hack that you want to get in the habit of. Yes, it's an extra step and it takes a little longer, but it's going to save you so much cleanup. It's going to give you those really crisp, clean lines and it's just going to take your project to another level that you've been missing out on. So just trust me on this and do it. Like I said, I'm using a paint marker in this situation, so I'm going to skip this step and I think that should be fine for me. Um, I have a cry, the Krylon Gold Leafing Pens. These things are amazing and I highly suggest them for literally any of your projects. There's just no comparison. Even if you were to buy a cheap, decent pen, when you put them side by side, hands down, the Krylon is going to outperform every single time. Trust me, I have done it. I have picked up those cheap Dollar Tree pens. I've picked up the Walmart pens. I've picked up the Michaels. There's no touching the Krylon. This is, I'm not sponsored, but let me tell you. I would rave them all day. So um, I can put in that description below 
that one that I use as well. Um, I don't have any affiliate links, so this is literally just me praising them because they're beautiful and they're amazing. So now it's time to stencil this in. I'm going to do, um, at first I was kind of just like coloring it in. When I stencil, I typically use, they tend to swirl and that happens to work best for me, particu and particularly for this as well. Um, after I did the first couple ones, um, I started doing that and it just covers a lot better for me. Um, everybody kind of has their own little technique that works. People use sponges and bounce, whatever. I have found that the swirling method is what personally works best for me. Um, you just have to be really gentle so that you're not moving the contact paper. For instance, like where the in, that little like angle that comes down. If you're too hard, you're just gonna move that off the wood and you're, it's not gonna be a good um, finish. So just really lightly, I'm just gonna swirl over. I'm gonna do two sets of the marker on it and then we're ready to peel this off. I think this turned out so beautiful. I love it. Um, this is going and is meant for indoors, so I'm not going to seal the marker or pin in at all. Um, it's gonna stay really well. So. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and add a hanger to it. I just used some white jute and um, a couple of the ribbons that I have on hand. I didn't have any really thin ribbon, which I felt like with the elegance of this, that's what it needed. So I just cut two um, of the colors of ribbon that I have. I have like this sheer light pink and this gold glitter. And I'm just going to tie those on to make like a, a fun little airy ribbon to add to the door hanger. And that is the completed project. So if you guys like this, let me know in the comments below. I love to hear from you guys. Um, if you give this a try, let me know what you have made, what colors you chose. I would just really love to hear what you guys have to say, what you've been up to. Um, yeah, I want to take you guys in for a closer look. I really appreciate you being here, and I'm going to see you next time.